Welcome back to another episode of the Burn Factory Podcast. And I'm not there, you know, for the glory. I'm not there for the salutes. I'm there to give every sailor an opportunity to achieve whatever it is they want out of life. You guys did fun things, like you did dance parties, you did like spelling bee competitions. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> the Navy's not hard. I Selfish. feel like people are focused on the prize, not the process. Absolutely. I say the fruit, not the root. What is up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Burn Factory Podcast. I'm your host, Priest, joined by my co-host, my brother, the one and only Phoenix. Say what's up to the camera. What's up, y'all? This is called the Burn Factory for a reason. I was literally caught on fire. 50% chance of surviving, and through that, I started this podcast because I believe every single person out there on this planet has a burn moment somewhere in their life. And yes, something that we do a little different on this show is you will hear us say burn moment. So a burn moment is a really tough time in your life that you ultimately had to get through to be where you are today, Priest. We have an amazing guest today, so cannot keep the man waiting. He has made it to the pinnacle mark of being in the Navy as he was a CO on three different naval ships. He was inducted into the 1998 Football Hall of Fame at the Naval Academy. He has won many awards like the Meritorious Service Medal, Naval Accommodation Achievement Medal, the Army Achievement Medal, and various unit and service awards. One of the most popular and entertaining captains in the Navy and just an overall good dude, man. The list keeps on going on, so please give a warm welcome to Captain Jervy Aloda. Yes. <laughs> All right. Should I salute you right now or what? Uh, if you stand at attention, you can salute me. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. and you gotta I, cut your hair too. I your hair's out of range. No, it's it's way too too out of control. What if I want to be different? Ooh, Ooh. <laughs> then you can come on my ship. Okay, <laughs> but what there is the what is the proper way to salute? Uh, man, you gotta go to boot camp for you to mm. learn that. Maybe oh. you ask your cousin. Yeah, well, oh, that's yeah. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> terrible. That's terrible. <laughs> What? That looks like a golfer salute, not a <laughs> military salute. Hey, look, I I someone. it is a truly an honor to be here today. Um, you know, to be able to just to talk to two guys that I have known since they were little kids. Yeah. And I swear, like, I've known you guys forever. And it's just so wild that uh, you guys only known Baby Jerv and went to school with them for a year. And the way that we've grown up together and, you know, become family in such a short amount of time, I love Everything that you guys stand for, everything that you guys do here. I love your parents. I love everything about the Riveras. And that's Thank why you. it's an honor to be here. Well, we love you guys. Yeah, we love, <laughs> we love the family. Yeah. Sad, sad to see you guys moved, though. That yeah, tough. that's why I'm repping the Colorado. Yeah, I know that you know yeah. we got we got some uh, some history there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I wanted to make sure I represented Colorado well. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of miss it sometimes. Like, we went back in February and like I don't miss the cold too much, but just like seeing the mountains or like blue crystal, just the scenery is amazing there. So I love I, it. I mean, I still think it's gorgeous. Like I live on the mountain and just the drive every day. I mean, it's it's the sand in San Diego, right? It's the beach of San Diego, the mountains. But boy, when it was negative nine, negative fourteen, <laughs> man, I was <laughs> in San Diego a little yeah, bit. That's, I've never that's what I burned miss. so much than when I was in that freezing cold. It's like something you can never get used to yeah. either. I hate the cold. Uh, I'm not a cold guy. Yeah. I did my times in Colorado, and now I'm in California, and I'll live here forever. Mm -hmm. But Hopefully. I, mean, I don't know if you guys saw my Instagram where I was feeding the deer. Mm -hmm. uh, he, like, So I've named him. He's Sven. And Same one that comes every time? He's my buddy. And he just waits for me. And I just sit there, and I was like, Sven. He looks at me, and he's like, okay, it's feeding time. And he comes, and he takes carrot from me. What him. do you feed him? Like okay, chips? You just said yeah. carrot. Oh, a carrot. So oh. I tried celery. Um, my wife gave me a celery to see if he likes celery. Nah, he like he tasted it and just like, well, give me that carrot. I swear, one day you're going to go out there, there's going to be 10 of them. He's going to tell all of his buddies that you're Oh, so he <laughs> has like he has his uh, his followers. Yeah. But they're like a little bit afraid. So Sven's really? the only one that, like, we're, we're tight. <laughs> he's like that that's funny <laughs> but me and priest were just talking it's crazy that almost a year ago today that we were on your ship listening to my mom speak and it was a funny thing like everyone we talked to everyone had the same saying that this was the funnest ship they've ever been on just the way that you 
like talk to them and you just bring energy and excitement to them. It was just, it was honest, honestly awesome. I'm, uh, ugh, I get tongue tied. <laughs> I get tongue tied. <laughs> it a was brain, honestly brain awesome moment. to hear. So, how do you just keep that entertainment and keep that excitement? Well, first of all, like folks still talk about that event with your mom. It's never happened before. And to this day, it is like things legends are made out of. You know, when they, when they talk about having someone as um, motivational and, and inspirational as Gina Rivera, they, you know, they, they're like, how do, you, how do you have something like that happen on your ship? And we were kind of the, the pioneers of that. Like, you know, like you said, being different, being bold. That's what we were all about. We wanted to give something for our crew because we put them through hell and back. And they, um, they deserve something like that. To hear someone that, you know, went through the, the trials and tribulations and just came from nothing to, you know, being the superstar, megastar that she is today, for every one of my sailors to hear that story, um, it just motivated them even more to do bigger and bigger and epic things. And so, um, you know, it was, like I said again, like it's, it was a talk of the Navy. They're figuring out how to get, you know, the the ethics and the legality of, of, of it happening again. But there's only one Gina Rivera. Like, <laughs> I yeah, said, right. well, that could have been a burn moment right there for the ship. Oh, absolutely. A change of tone and change of mentality. Yeah, because you, like, extra what do you, you normally hear the motivational speakers are like admirals or generals, and they don't bring the energy, right? And no one can really relate to a admiral or a general. But when you bring someone who's just like us, you know, who tells a story that's so personable and just so loving and so, you know, just so motivational, um, you know, it, the, the, the sailors can connect and relate and it just motivates them even more to go out and try to be someone like her. Did you see a, a big shift after oh, she absolutely, spoke? Absolutely, yeah. because I, I don't know if you guys remember, but we just got turned around to do another underway and the crew was just, um, you know, they were spent, they were beat, but they they would do it because they knew that they were answering the call and the way that we lead and the way that we motivate, they know that they have a job to do. They know that they all have to do their job to the best of, of their ability if the ship is going to succeed. So they were already tired and spent. So then to have the honor of listening to someone as motivational as your mom, um, it just gave them a little bit of energy, a little bit more like a like a recharge of their battery to go out and continue to do the things that we were, we were called to do. Where did you guys even go on that sail away? So first we went to um, Seventh Fleet, like South China Sea area. And we did some epic things. We came back and then another ship broke down. Um, and then, you know, we got the call and we ended up going down to Peru to show the flag and operate with 30 other, you know, Latin American nations. Um, and we... We, we did some pretty wild <laughs> things across the equator. So it was a great time for the crew to do something, um, you know, that no, not a lot of sailors get to do. It's kind of like, you know, it, it's, it's a, their, their honor, their, their shield of honor, you know, to be able to cross the equator, become shellbacks. I don't know if Seth's a shellback or not. We've got to ask them. Yeah. What yeah. is it? What is a shellback? So someone that's, you know, it, it, it's before you cross the equator, you're a, a, a polywog, a slimy polywog. But then as soon as you cross the equator and you meet King Neptune, then you get like you get your salt and you become uh, a, you know, a trusted shellback. Oh, so it's a it's huge like ceremony. Yeah. And, oh, uh, you do like a whole ceremony yeah, for oh, it? Oh, yeah. It's pretty did you guys wild. do a ceremony on your boat? On the oh, trip? we do. Yeah. But they have to they have to go to work first before they get mm. they get the, mm -hmm. the title. Is so it just like an um, like American thing or does all all other nations do it? I as think well? all other nations do it. Really? As well. Yeah, I know like the Australians, the Canadians do it. Shoot, I might have to go across the equator now. <laughs> I know, I become a shellback. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that, yeah. That, yeah, that'd be pretty honorable. And then you get like a certificate. And you, really? Like a true mariner. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's take a boat. We'll, we'll go on Jeremy next time. Yeah. That's right. Or we're going with we're gonna roll cousin. out there with two battleships like this. <laughs> <laughs> so when you guys leave, you guys obviously travel in fleets. So do all the other ships have to leave with you guys too? Like on that quick turnaround you guys had? So those were independent ops. Um, oh. So the three, we did three out of area, um, you know, a couple day transits just to get to where we were operating. And that was single ship. So you have to be able to be self-sustaining. You got to be able to fight on your own. Um, it's pretty scary because when you're an R, you got backups, right? Or uh, like a, a strike group, you have backups. Um, when you're sailing alone and unafraid, you don't have the part support. You don't have the um, 
you know, the, you know, the fuel and water and gas supplies, um, ships that uh, typically accompany, um, you know, strike groups. So we were alone and unafraid. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it was a true testament that we were able to do all three of those out of area deployments on our own. And, you know, it wasn't always perfect, right? We had our burn moments, but folks had to step up and fix the engines and learn how to cook with limited supplies of food, um, take on aircraft when, you know, the wheels are dangling. Um, there was always something that had happened that the crew had to step up. We're talking 18, 19, 20 year olds that actually saved the day to allow us to continue to operate. And that's pretty fascinating when you think, you know, you have some young kids that are operating these billion dollar warships. They're the ones in between the lines making it happen. And when you think like, I'm just like some old fart, you know, just kind of giving orders. It's the young kids that are in between the lines, guys from the Midwest, from the East Coast, from all over, coming together for one common goal. And that's to make that ship run to answer the call of our nation, I which is like, pretty phenomenal. That's insane. Um, I also feel like with like the young people, they just want it more than anyone else out there, I feel like. Well, so this generation is weird, right? Like, because they have to know the why. Like, you can't just say, hey, go do that. And they're like, why? Yeah. And back in the day, they, you know, just shut up in color or else they'd get, like, whooped. But mm -hmm. now it's like you got to explain the why. And as leadership, you got to be able to spend that 30, 40 seconds to explain to them why you do certain things. Why do I have to paint the sides of the ship? Uh, because I said so. No, it doesn't work like that. It's because you got to make ship make the ship look sexy. It's because you got to prevent the rust from happening so the salt water doesn't decay them so that you can stay afloat. That took me 15 seconds to explain the why. This generation, they'll get after it if you just tell them why they're getting after it. Now, if you just say, just do it, and then we're like, yeah, whatever. You know, and then they'll write letters to the congressman and letters to oh, the CEO. Yeah. But if you just tell them the why and, and motivate them and inspire them and maybe even get down and dirty with them so they can see, oh, man, the captain's doing that too, then they'll be like, okay, yeah, let's get I'll after it. it. Yeah, Because they're so talented and they're so smart, so much smarter than when I was growing up. Um, but you just got to be able to motivate them and connect with them. Once they feel like they're valued and they're living purposeful lives, there's nothing that they won't do. And that's the key to leadership, especially with the younger generation. And culture. I feel like you got to sustain a great culture on the boat or else no one's going to want to work ever. Any organization, whether it's Phoenix Salons, whether it's a football team, whether it's the ship, it's all about culture, a culture of love, a culture of family, a culture of winning. Like it all starts with winning, right? You have to be successful. And then once the winning and the momentum starts to happen, then you really just kind of dive in and everyone will understand that the things that you're doing for the family, for the people, it works. It's all about love. And when they see that the, that the leadership really cares about the people and nothing else but the people, then the people will perform regardless. And when you get a group of or the entire team performing, you can't lose. And that's how it was on the John P. Murtha. Like, you just care about the sailors and let them know that they're loved. Let them know that they're cared about. Let them know that they add so much value and purpose to the ship. And then when they go out and do their jobs, man, they do it with little, like, you know, a little pep to their step. And they go out and they do the mission. And next you know, we're the freaking sexiest ship on the waterfront <laughs> doing yeah. epic things like having yes, Gina Hare on board yes, the ship. Sir. Exactly. Uh, even, even when we did go and watch my mom speak on your ship, you can tell just the life on the ship is just so like, they're so combined and united. Yeah. And they just love awesome. to be there. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's pride, right? It's, you know, they want to show off the two six. Like my goal when I first got to the ship was we were going to be the sexiest ship on the waterfront. It's sexy in how we look, sexy in how we sail, sexy in how we fight. And they took that on board. So anytime we had people come on board, you know, they were all smiling. You know, they had their chest puffed out, just really proud to represent the 2-6 because they knew that they represented the sexy ship on the waterfront because that's exactly what, what we were. And what better way to showcase that, you know, to like an icon like Gina Rivera. <laughs> I know you guys had to jump through a lot of hoops to get through that as yeah. well, though. Yeah. I mean, again, just like a, like a team, right? Or like a, like a football team. It's not just the game, right? It's the preparation and the training that happens prior to set and sail. So, like, when I first took over, we were in the shipyard, which is a dirty, nasty place. You got a bunch of contractors on board. It's filthy. And we were already, like, 15 20% behind. And it was during COVID when, you know, you had to be, you know, social distancing. You had to wear masks. Like, who can get work done, especially in the engine rooms, masked up, and you couldn't work close, you know, elbow to elbow, you know, turning wrenches. 
it was just an impossible environment. So we had to figure out ways, creative ways to get the ship out of the shipyards, catch up so you're out at sea where we belong, where we can get the small victories and build the momentum so that the ship can just experience the epic things that we did out at sea answering the call. Was it difficult running a ship though with COVID? Like, oh my gosh, as being a captain, <laughs> it's terrible. So I'm a rah rah guy, obviously. Like, I love to huddle the folks. I love to spend time with them. I want them to see my face and the passion that I have and the love that I have for this job. When I masked up, they couldn't see it. We couldn't huddle up because we had to be six feet away from each other. We could only spend 15 minutes together, you know, in an enclosed space. So I was like, I became real efficient with my pep talks. I became real creative in the ways that I was able to talk to the folks like I started the Instagram mm -hmm. because there's no way that I can be able to relay my message my vision my goals my intent you know when half the crew wasn't even there to begin with because of COVID um, uh, uh, stipulations mm -hmm. so I started the Instagram just to let them know that I cared about them that this is the things that we're getting after for the week um, these are the folks that I want to recognize and, 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 and just show my appreciation because they performed, um, you know, above and beyond themselves. So that is kind of how the, that Instagram started. And, you know, you got to innovate and, and learn new ways how to lead, especially in environments like COVID. It was tough. Yeah, your Instagram is probably the sickest Instagram I've ever seen. You're always <laughs> posting videos of like routines and shooting off missiles. And it's it's just so cool. But also you alluded to it like you guys did fun things like you did dance parties. You did like spelling bee competitions. Yeah. Oh my God, that was hilarious. <laughs> I saw that on an Instagram the and other day and I was laughing <laughs> nonstop. It's just uh, you and your bucket hat sitting on the big table. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think, I think you guys even did like karaoke, like just so many fun things and it all resorts back to culture. And I think one of the things that people in the, that are not in the military don't understand that it's a grind being away out at sea. I mean, first of all, when you're going through, you know, eight, 10 foot seas, the quality of life is just terrible. Food slashes everywhere and crashes everywhere. You can't sleep well. Um, you get nauseous. Just being away from your families for seven, eight, nine months at a time, it's terrible. Like, it inherently sucks, right? So the only thing that's going to get sailors to, to cross the finish line is to have that culture of family, of love, is to, you know, let them know that you care about them. Because if, if, they, if it just becomes a grind, then it's just going to suck, right? And it's attitude, right? Like, if they come to work smiling and, and, and looking forward to whatever the captain has planned next, then it becomes exciting. Like when we turned around and did that three month to Peru, I mean, I talked about, and this is kind of where I just became real and authentic with the crew. Like I it was almost in tears and I was talking about, listen, I know it sucks. It sucks for everybody. It sucks for me. I'm missing my son's football season. And all I wanted to do my entire life was to watch my son play football his senior year. And now the Navy's turning me around to say, go do this with the Peruvians. I want to go see my son play football, but I don't have that opportunity. And I know that a lot of you guys are in the same boat. So we all need to fix our face and get after it together because the nation needs us. And then I kind of stormed off and everyone's like, yeah, wow. let's get after it. So mm -hmm. it's about being real. It's about being authentic. It's about being able to connect with the sailors and not just saying, hey, we got to go. Bottom line, fix your face, let's go. And you know, no one will respond, especially with this generation, right? Mm -hmm. But if you can connect with them, let them know that, hey, you're hurting too, and you're, you're affected by it as well, then, um, okay, man, the captain knows, and he gets it. So let's go fight for him, and let's fight for us. And then you just get a, a warship that's just badass. Wow. It's the dopest so ship I've ever seen. Yeah. yeah, It's so inspirational, though, just the military in general, just how much you guys sacrifice yeah. for us and for our freedom, like, we yeah. can't even thank you guys. So, so thank you for that. your service. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. And there's a lot of folks that deserve that praise a lot more than me. But, you know, that's why we do the fun things, right? Because when they are fighting, like, there is so much that they put on the line for everyone. So why not when there is white space, when there's downtime, do something crazy. Like jump off the ship. Like, jump off the <laughs> ship. Like, get a pinata. Yeah. Like, have a Club 2-6 dance party. Yeah. And I always told my crew, and one of my goals... Um, for the entire crew was to have a positive sea story. 
So every time, like I would say goodbye to, and and have a debrief, um, like an exit um, brief with every sailor, regardless of of their rank, from lowest to the highest. And I would always ask them, "Well, what's your positive sea story?" And um, I mean, it was amazing. They would talk about memories. I had no no idea that we did. Um, and it's just to be able to foster that kind of environment where they were leaving the ship, you know, with a smile on their face, thinking, "Man, this was an epic time." The only thing that sucks is I know that we'll never experience this again. Yeah. Um, but now I know what the Navy can be. And like the junior officers, like I tell them and I challenge them, hey, when you become the captain of your ship, don't don't forget, you know, what this culture was all about. The entire ship smiling, even though the environment, the situation sucked, they still were smiling because they knew that, the, you know, leadership cared about them, that they were living purposeful lives. And they were going to get after it. And losing was not an option because, you know, in the military, you lose, people die. And we just can't afford that, um, especially this, this day and age. Mm -hmm. How hard was it to, for you? Because obviously now you're not the CEO of the John P. Martha anymore. But how hard was it to leave? It's tough. Tough. It's tough. You know, just being able to, um, you know, affect and influence people's lives at that magnitude. We're talking 400 sailors, 600 Marines, 1,000 people that I'm seeing every day. Um, you know, and then being able to see the success, right? Like it's measurable. You can go out to see when every time you get out to see on time, that's a win. Whenever you're able to put rounds down range, that's a win. Whenever you're able to meet the mission, it's a win. So you always have these daily wins. Um, so I was living a purposeful life. I'm okay now, but yeah, it, it, it hurt a little bit that I didn't have that ability um, to affect and influence in a positive manner. Um, you know, the thousand folks. Mm. But yeah, you're a positive influence to everyone. You're a positive influence to us. And um, just can't thank you enough for everything you do. But we got to keep the show mo yeah. moving. Dude, I don't know what is with my words I make you today. nervous. I know, you're making me nervous. Is nervous. <laughs> I'm just a, a CO. Got to keep the show moving. Yeah. Let's go to B. B stands for beginning. So take me back to your childhood, high school days. Was there a burn moment? Were there many burn moments that you went through that ultimately got you to here today. Yeah, man. Like I, I think about my childhood and probably the, one of the things that neither of you will ever um, able to comprehend is the fact that I was a middle child, right? So I wasn't the baby. I wasn't the big brother. I was the middle child. I was the one that was always stuck with the chores, never got the attention. And I remember vividly that, you know, my, my, my older brother, we, you know, we did a family trip and my older brother got to drive the motor home. And I was like, oh, I want to drive. He's like, no, you're not old enough yet. And then my baby sister, like, hey, can I drive? He's like, oh, yeah, come sit on my lap. And at that moment, I thought to myself, man, what am I going to do so I can get the attention of my parents? So I had to be bold. I had to be different. So being the middle child kind of forced me to be different. Like I knew I had to excel that much more in sports. I had to excel that much more in academics in order to get recognized, in order to get, you know, some sort of, you know, pat on the back from my parents to say, okay, son, you're all right, kid. You know, you're not the oldest son, you're not the, middle, uh, the, the baby, but you're all right. Um, so from that moment forward, I was always different. I was always trying to be bold so that I can stand out. Um, and I think being the middle child um, helped me appreciate that. Um, another burn moment, and when, when I talk about being burned, um, in, in this moment, um, I, I think about how it made me feel at the moment and then how it really affected my life. Uh, I grew up in Southeast San Diego, and I, I know that you guys know where that's at, down in Skyline. Mm -hmm. I went to Morris High School, and, um, you know, I, that was back in the 90s when, you know, Colors was out, Big Gang, you know, Eastside, Piru, Bloods and Crips. And um, I was a part, like, my boys, my, you know, my closest friends we're all part of this gang because they all, you know, we all play football together. And uh, all I wanted to do was be them, be with them. I wanted to be part of that brotherhood. And um, so one day, you know, when they did the initiations, and back in the day, initiations were, were pretty um, brutal. Um, you know, part of that was, yeah. you know, you got to you know, fight someone, someone from the gang one-on-one, -on -one, and then five people come jump in, and you got to oh. walk the gauntlet. Oh. And I was, like, prepared for it because I wanted to get jumped into this gang. And it so happened the night, it was at La Jolla Shores, I remember it um, to this day. We were all in line, ready to get jumped in. There was like five of us. And I was first in line. 
And then so everyone kind of got rallied up. They got, you know, the whole gang was there ready for, for this big event. Um, so then the OG, the original gangster, you know, was like, all right, Jervis, let's go. I was like, all right, man, I was getting my mind ready to go, ready uh-huh. to fight. And then he took me aside and he was like, hey, Jervy, I know that uh, you know, this is what you want, um, but we're not going to jump you in today. I was like, these are my wow. brothers. Like, I'm a part of them. I want to be legit. I want to be a part of you guys. And he put his arm around my shoulder and he's like, hey, listen, you got way too much going on in your life um, to be doing this stupid stuff with us. You know, you'll always be a part of our family, but we're not going to jump you in. Wow. Oh, man, I was freaking, like, I, I didn't know how to respond. I was hurt. Like, I felt like I was disowned. Like, they didn't want me a part of their family. Well, it turns out the other five um, or the other four that got jumped in that night, part of their initiation was to go to somebody's house and shoot a kid um, point blank. And they did it in front of the mom. They actually did it. And uh, to this day, they're still in jail. So can you imagine if that one OG didn't take care of me and he, and he didn't say, Jerry, it ain't going to happen with you today because you have too much going on in your life? I would have been in jail oh because I would have done that with them because they were my brothers. So you talk about a burn moment and, like, and that changed my life, a crucible moment in my life. This one OG took me aside and said, it ain't going to happen to you today, right? You have way too much going on. And that's why I try to take care, care of people as much as I, as much as I do because... I mean, just that one person, that one influence in, in, in your life can really turn it around. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just so wild to think about, you know, if that never happened, like, You're can in you jail. imagine? That's I'm not insane. the seal yeah. of the ship. I'm not having this podcast with you guys. Yeah. yeah, I'm sitting in jail. Think about all the lives you've already changed. changed You're not jail. changing yeah. thousands and thousands of people's lives. And like as a, like a young high schooler, like you don't know any better, like. I mean, you know it's wrong to shoot somebody, in front, yeah, but uh-huh. but you want to be there with your brothers. You know, you want to you don't want to be that punk. So that's exactly what I would have thought. I wouldn't have said, "Oh man, I might be, you know, I won't have the opportunity to do the things I want to do, like command a ship." No, like you want to do that with your brother. So, but this one guy saw it. He saw the potential in me, and he took me aside and said, "It ain't gonna happen to you today." Wow! Wow! Sounds like a God thing. Oh, oh absolutely, one hundred percent is. Yeah. 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 So be bold, be different, and take care of people. That's mm-hmm. kind of been my mantra. Yeah, and it's really sure. those two things that have shaped um, who I am uh, to uh-huh. this day. And, and, I mean, everything that happened to you, it, like, I never thought about it like that. Like, I never thought about, you know, burn moments, times of adversity that shaped you to becoming the person who you are today. And that's why, like, I mean, I personally want to thank you guys for making this happen. <laughs> because I was, like, just being, you know, just kind of introspective and, and, you know, just reflecting back on my life. You know, what were the events that shaped me? Who made Jervy Aloda? And like as small of a thing that was. Um, Change your entire life. It, 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 it defines me. Uh-huh. I almost feel like like we're blessed that something like happens like that to get to where we're at today. I almost. Oh, yeah. And whenever I, I got think- burned and just like, it's kind of crazy. I felt like I was not going down like a bad hole almost, but I feel like I was going down like not in a great path, obviously. Yeah. And God saw something in me. He's like, nope, you need to get out of that path. Yeah. And so that I happened. I remember when it happened. And I remember first seeing the pictures that Jeremy sent me. Man, I was just like, is this real? Is this is this actually happening? Mm-hmm. And but for you to come back in, in the fashion that you did, um, it was pretty remarkable. And 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 I mean, the way that your face was wrapped, and mm-hmm. I mean, everything that you loved to do was taken away from yeah. you. And um, yeah, and I mean, your chances of living were like slim to none or whatever, like 50% yeah, or something 50%. like that. Yeah. And you still found a way, like something motivated you. Someone gave you the strength to, mm-hmm. to overcome and, and persevere that, hey, no one's going to keep priests down. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to let this little fire, this little mishap um, affect me and stop me from achieving the things that mm-hmm. I want to do. And that's why I respect you. At such a young age, you guys are doing this. Talking about burn moments. Yeah. Yeah. With the whole Thank man. You. That's, yeah. you know, I mean, oh, no, you're not there's, old. there's just certain <laughs> things and people that, that happen, that come into your life um, that help you kind of just reflect and be so thankful and blessed mm-hmm. um, that they've come into your life. Because, like, again, like yeah, all that, that stuff that happened to us, right? That happened to you, happened to me. But you don't really have the time to sit down and reflect and thank God because... Um, I mean, like, like we said, it all happens for a reason, 
but you don't have that opportunity to reflect unless you do things like this right? especially yeah, sure. in the moment like oh, you yeah. were probably yeah. very pissed that they didn't let you and then he was like pissed like why did this happen yeah. to me absolutely mm -hmm. it's just crazy to see how at one point it just shifts a little bit they're like wow like i'm just blessed that this happened to me seriously not in like the way that like I'm happy that it happened to me, yeah. but like I can like take this story and I can show people that like there is an outlet and, that, and there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Same with uh, whenever we interviewed uh, Sean Porter, he said little things in life make you happy, and it's 100% spot on. It's it's all about the little things, right? Mm -hmm. And then, but in order for the little things to be special in your life, like someone needs to come along and yep. and reaffirm sure. that yep. there are these little things that God placed in your world for you to appreciate. So. Like, be fortunate. Be happy that you have these little things in life. Sit down and reflect and say thank you. And also thank the people that gave you these little things because you didn't do it by yourself. Mm -mm. Someone that came along the, you know, lo along the way yeah. to say, hey, here is this little thing. Here is this little thing. Here is this little thing. Yep. Crazy. So leading us right into our next topic, though. You, unfortunate, many unfortunate things happen in our life that get us to who we are today. I'm sure there's... So many unfortunate moments that happened in your life. Yeah, there were. And, um, you know, just talking Navy, um, you know, I was the chief engineer, the, uh, the Chang on board a ship. I was, I was responsible for uh, the power, the propulsion, um, you know, the lights, auxiliaries, everything um, that had any power um, that associated with power. Um, and I was responsible for that, the entire plant. Um, you know, one of the one of the ways on a ship that you make water is you have boilers right and boilers there's big flame um you know the, the, that, that boil the water yeah but you boil the water and get the steam and uh we had an unfortunate incident where the boiler burned up and and, and exploded uh -huh. um and there was two sailors um uh, one chief um and one engine man um third class that was in the engine room when the boiler blew up Luckily, um, you know, all they had were a few burns, um, you know, that full of soot and, uh, but the boiler just exploded. And, um, you know, it was one of those moments where I could have been fired. I should, probably should have been fired. And, um, but I use it as a lesson, um, you know, to a, you know, you got to use the book, you got to use the procedure. There's a checklist for a reason. And, uh, the operators weren't using the checklist. Um, and someone could have died. Someone could have, you know, got severely injured um, because they didn't use the book. And you know, un you know, fortunately for me, um, you know, I, I kept my job. Uh, we did a pretty good job up to that incident. Um, um, so they 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 saw potential in me. But you know, can you imagine if that boiler exploded in you know in the vicinity of their bodies, you know, and and and, and killed them? Like I would have been done. Like not my job. I don't care about the job at that point. It's like it was because of me, or I lost a sailor on my watch, two sailors on my watch. And how dare you know? As a leader, I allowed that to happen. Were you, were you captain at that? I, no, no, I you was. Weren't. I was still a lieutenant, lieutenant commander. So oh three, oh four. I'm oh six now. Um, so still, you know, responsibility. As a department head, as an O3, maybe 28, 30 years old, I'm responsible for 100 engineers. Wow. And, uh, you know, just in a moment's notice, man, I could have lost two of them. Wow. So O6 is like the top, like top. Oh, no, so there's one more step, and that's Admiral. Oh. So, yeah, so there's O6, O7, O8, O9, and you got Admiral lower half, uh, rear Admiral lower half, rear Admiral upper half. Vice Admiral and then four star Admiral. Wow. What's what's the end goal? You want to get to an Admiral or is that the next? Huh? Is that the N for burn? No, I was is just this is the question. <laughs> it was just like what yeah. is the end oh. goal? I don't know, man. Like I really just want to spend time with my wife. Um I just want to get off the grid and fish and golf. Yeah. And, hey, uh, golf. And, uh, <laughs> You know, it's it, it's been a grind. Like all I really wanted was to command ships, be a positive influence in young sailors' lives, and um, at that level, at that higher level, um, it becomes a little bit more political, and you don't get to command ships anymore. You have influence, but not direct influence as you do as a commanding officer. So, um, you know, is it worth the squeeze? I don't think so. Um, 
Yeah, I really just want to spend t- some time with my wife. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Plus, you've already did it all. Absolutely. I did it three so, times. Oh. <laughs> what, yeah, is, three what, times. Is, what is each ship you were on running completely different than the other ship? Or? Yeah, they were all three different stories. Like my first one, I was a fleet up, right? So I was an XO first for two years, and then I fleeted up to become the CO. So I was able to shape the culture as the XO. My CO at the time was uh, an aviator. And he didn't know anything about running ships. So he was just like, Jervy, you're the senior SWO. This is your ship, and you're going to command it next. So just run it however you see fit. I'll just be your top cover. So I was able to shape it early. So when I became the CEO, uh, that ship was just awesome. <laughs> the next opportunity um, was kind of a blessing, but you know, really kind of a tough challenge. The CEO got fired um, because the ship was failing. And every certification, they, could, they failed to get underway. Um, they were just in bad, bad shape. So I took over and uh, you talk about able, you know, being able to turn a ship around just based on culture. It was a beautiful thing to watch. Um, you know, I, I came on board the ship, huddled them up, called them losers. And I told them I don't <laughs> lose, you know, so it's not going to happen on my ship. We got away like three days later and, you know, you see like the change in their faces and their attitudes just like that um, wow. only because they were able to, build on small victories after small victories and like holy smokes we could do this Mm -hmm. this isn't hard you know we are capable mariners and all i did was give them a little bit of vision give them a little motivation and then i got out of the way Mm -hmm. you know because these sailors are smart they're talented they don't need someone to tell them how to do their jobs so all you do is you give them the guidance and then get out of the way and then once they do an epic job pat them on the back and say thank you recognize them appreciate them do you reward them after, like Absolutely. with all the games and stuff, with basketball, all, basketball games, and the, oh man, <laughs> you mean like on the in the wild? Uh, yeah, on the yeah, <laughs> on the ship. No, so you know those weren't rewards because I'd always just freaking beat them, beat them down. Mm-hmm. You know, when it comes to competitions, I don't. Yeah, I, I'm <laughs> gonna allow them to win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, but you know, simple ways to appreciate and recognize folks. Like we did. I don't know if you saw the Instagram reel when they, we called it the bag of balls. Right. And you had a bunch of balls in a bag and they're all different colors and they represent different things. And, you know, if you did something epic, you got to pick from the bag of balls. And, you know, for instance, like a purple one was like a 96 hour Liberty where they could just yeah not come to work for four days. And then it was like 24 hour Liberty, 48 hour Liberty, duty day off. Um, And I always gave like random awards, you know, for just, you know, for spot, you know, um, you know, spot. They're, sp- they're called spot awards for doing something meritorious, um, like a single event, and recognize them in front of the crew. Because, I mean, I can't give them much. Like, I can't give them more money. Yeah. They got to do that on yeah. their own. They got to yeah. get promoted. Mm-hmm. I can give them time off, right? Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, so I use that ability as a commanding officer because it's no skin off my back. Like, if I give somebody a 48 hours, we're not going to lose production on board the ship. But you know what? I'm going to get much more production when he comes back because he's going to be like, holy smokes, Cam cares about me, the crew cares about me, and they saw that I was recognized because all I did was paint the side of the ship and I did it with a smile on my face. I mean, I rewarded somebody for having the best rack, the best, you know, they made their bed the best. Wow. And, you know, when you recognize a sailor for making their rack the best, guess what? The entire crew tries to make their rack just the as good. Mm-hmm. And they're like, hey, Captain, Captain, come look at my rack. <laughs> Captain, look at my bed. Yeah. And then they all get excited about it. One thing that became just, you know, this evil chore that I got to wake up and I got to make my rack every day, it became a competition. It became a, oh, man, I can't wait for the Captain to see my rack today because, you know, it's awesome. And I'm going to get me uh you know, opportunity to pick from the bag of balls because he's gonna look at my rack and he just gets so freaking thrilled and excited about it. Little things like that just make a huge difference. Mm-hmm. Nicest dude on the planet, right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but too. don't get it twisted though, right? Like, I'm a, I'm a nice guy. Like, I love people, but also, like, if you don't perform and you don't do your your role, your job on board the ship, I'm I'm gonna hold you accountable. Like, I love every sailor off the bat, but you better work because we're all working. And if you're not going to do your part, I'm going to give you some stuff, you know, and, and, and you, no one wants to see what's angry, the, what's angry that stuff. stuff. So what's, the, what's that stuff? <laughs> if you ask anyone on board the ship, yeah, so we have like this disciplinary procedure called NJP, non-judicial punishment. And it's basically where the captain gets in front of you and... 
Um, you know, obviously for that say that did something wrong, they got to get in their dress uniforms and I could do a bunch of different things to them. You know, I can restrict them to the ship. I can give them bread and water. I could take away money. I could take away rank. Um, walk the plane, walk the plane, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. but I really use it as an opportunity, like a life lesson, like a, um, a scared straight moment, man. Like I, I don't curse, but that's the only time on board the ship where I do. Cause I get in their face and I let them know how they just disappointed me, how they let down the ship, they let down their family, let down their shipmates. And you have a choice from here on out. Like you can go and fix yourself and, and don't make the same mistake twice. Or you can say F you captain. And then I'm just going to freaking beat you down. Um, so um, when, when I have those come to Jesus moments with those sailors, um, you can see the ones that really care. That, I mean, I, I've seen folks, just their careers taken off right after that uh, little experience. And I've seen sailors that just don't say, F you, Captain. Yeah. And then they do it again, and then they're out of the Navy. So oh, I don't wow. mess around. Have you, know? have you had to kick someone out of the Navy? Oh, absolutely. I've had a chief you know, who I spared his career, and I, I vouched for him. And then he went out and did it again. It was alcohol-related. He went oh. out and did it again, and I... Kicked him out of the Navy. I took away his anchors and he was done. What what goes into kicking someone out of the Navy? Oh, there's, just, I mean, gone. just like, you just, so for me, throw them I, overboard. Yeah. So <laughs> if, if, if I don't trust you, like, hey, hey, you got to do right, right? If you can't do right, I can't trust you. And if I can't trust you, you're dead to me. I just need you off the ship. Um, but they all know that if I can't trust them, they're done. And when they're done, like, you, you take all their uniforms, you take all their stuff, they got to wow. do some administrative stuff. But it's almost like walking the plank. Like you walk, you know, the brow of shame, and folks are just like, "Wow, wow, wow. that's tough." Yeah, it's <laughs> t- and you know, most of these folks, they got mouths to feed, right? Yeah. Like that's all they know. They just, you know, for the longest time, you know, they were getting a steady paycheck, and they were getting benefits, and they were getting food, everything. Everything was, you know, in the military, they do a good job of compensating um, you for your for your efforts mm-hmm. and, and, and and your time. So when you they when they kick you out and you don't get that severance pay, you don't get that retirement, you no longer get that steady paycheck. Man, tough. it's tough. Huh? Yeah, it's yeah. real tough. Mm-hmm. It's really tough. But and right. you gotta live one second. Oh, and go you gotta live it, with go that for that. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta before I lose and um I forgot. I cut it. him off. I cut him off. <laughs> All right. When it comes back to you, we'll go, but oh. You got to live with it for the rest of your life, too, knowing that you've been thrown off the ship. Absolutely. And then, like, how do you explain to your kids? Like, Dad, you were in the Navy, right? Like, what happened? What do you tell your kid? <laughs> I drank too much. I yeah, partied yeah. too hard. But you don't want to tell that because they're going right. to look at you differently. Absolutely. Uh, that's tough, dude. Yeah. That is tough. It does last forever, though. But that's sure. life, too, right? Like, it's not just in the Navy. Like, you always want to be proud of your actions. You always want to be proud of the things that you do. Because at some point, you got to explain to your kids. You know, because they're going to ask the question, hey, what'd you do, Dad, when you're older? What happened? Were you successful? What'd you do to become successful? Or what'd you do to become a failure? You got to be able to answer, answer yeah. the mail. This portion of the Burn Factory podcast is sponsored by Phoenix Salon Suites. Please visit Phoenix Salon Suites at P H E N I X Salons, S A L O N Suites, S U I T E S dot com to find one near you. Moving on from you, the boiler incident was definitely unfortunate, but yeah. ours is a little more fun. Um, stands for ridiculous. So, all those tours, there's got to be a few ridiculous burn moments that stick out. Yeah, well, so not particular moments, um, but, you know, when we got turned around to do that Unitas, you know, it was hard on the entire crew, but it was up to me as the leader to give them, because that was a, kind of the ship's burn moment, right? They they burned us real hard and saying, all right, you know, you aren't going to see your families. I know it was tough. I know you guys are just, you know, out at sea um, and you guys are coming back. But two days from now, you guys got to go back out for three more months. And that's tough. That, that, that is a, a, a true bur- burn moment, for, especially for folks that had plans to watch their son play football for their senior year. Um, so what did I learn from that? Like, it's up to the leadership to pay them back. Because Big Navy, the folks that tasked us to do that, they don't know what we've gone through. They don't know what, we, you know, what we've done the previous three, four months. So it's up to us to say thank you to the sailors for all the things that they did. So then I rallied the troops, you know, the leadership, and I said, all right, while we are transiting, while we're sailing, while we are not training while transiting, what can we do 
that's ridiculous that they will always remember. <laughs> yeah. um, and we did some crazy did talent shows, did pinatas, the club two six. Yeah. We had a captain's cup where we did eating competitions, spelling bee, <laughs> oh. push up competitions, three legged race. <laughs> uh-huh. I mean, you talk about like family reunions when they're doing all these different you know competitions within their family. That's what we we're doing. Like departments would form their own teams, and we would just compete. Tug of war, man. It was just so epic. And it got so like oh, arm wrestling competition, right? They were uh-huh. wearing costumes and it was just like just the competitiveness throughout the ship. Everyone was coming out, like trying to miss their watches so that they can watch all the competitions. We really made it super fun. Dodgeball in the well deck. Oh my god. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I wonder what it's like playing like basketball on a ship, just on a battleship. Oh, it, <laughs> it's, it's, it's wild. It's, like it, so they almost banned it on board our ship because they have, um, first of all, it's non-skid, right? So the, the the deck is super hard. It's not flat. Oh. And if you fall, you're getting scraped up. Like you're oh. getting you're getting Ooh. pretty scarred. Um, so, but people, like when they compete, they go all out. They don't care about the non-skid. They don't care mm, about yeah, a, they don't a care. cut. Oh, yeah. They're diving for balls, especially <laughs> if the game's on the line. Yeah. They're just um, trying to win. They're just <laughs> trying to win. And, you know, we had... We did one dodgeball competition where it was a small little girl. Um, she was a you know a young seaman, and her whole team was out. Right, she was the only one standing. It was one small girl versus four dudes, like four engineers, and like she, just single handedly, like this one girl got the entire ship to root for her, and like she single handedly <laughs> no just took down one engineer after another, and it was just like this one big dude and her. 1v1, and uh, she ended up winning. The no whole way. ship just mobbed her, put oh, her on the shoulders. That's awesome. And she that's was great. like a, she was an executive, right? So ex- executive department, like people that don't get their hands dirty, they just do paperwork. Wow. But all of, like even the engineers, like ran to her <laughs> and lifted her up. She became the new like hero of the entire ship. That's and awesome. And a simple game of dodgeball where her teammates got down like so fast, like they were out of it. And then single-handedly, like, she just started plucking one, two, <laughs> three. And then the final one, uh, dude, I, that was throwing freaking bombs. Yeah. And uh, she took him down, and uh, and and then she became the hero of the show. I'll tell you what, the burn moment for her was getting the crowd hype. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she had oh, a burn man. moment. Uh-huh. She became legendary. It was awesome. Oh, she became yeah. famous on the oh, ship yeah. after that. She did. And, awesome. then, and then, you know, not only was she famous, but... People knew who she was, mm-hmm. you know, and she was now known as that girl that never quit, that defeated all of the engineers by herself, like the David and Goliath of mm-hmm. the ship. Yeah. She that was her. So now she is, she had a name for herself. Where before she, she was, was just a small little you know exec that just did paperwork in this small little office. Wow. Now walking around the ship, she became legendary. I'll tell you what, that probably changed her life forever after that. I hope so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, my it, view of her changed. Yeah, most definitely. Everyone else probably too. Yeah. I'm assuming and the ship's culture just never quit, no matter if you're down. Like you yeah. always got a fighting chance. Yeah, mm-hmm. don't quit. And yeah, they know, um, you know, that we're all about winning, right? Mm-hmm. And there's no whenever day be great. Whenever day be great, you know. Mm-hmm. And they they know what that means. They know what it stands for. And I, I think probably more so than having to face the captain at NJP, where they potentially get restriction, bread and water, money taken, rank taken, they just didn't want to let me down. Right. I don't want to say that's their sole motivation, but, you know, they the, the entire ship fought, you know, for our culture, not to let the captain or the crew or the or the officers down. And they did whatever it took for us to win. You know, and when you have a ship that fights for the culture, a ship that fights to win, man, you can't. You, I mean, that ship will be able to do anything. It won't be stopped. Yep. Yeah. Unstoppable. Awesome. I do got to ask about your time on Fear Factor, though. That's oh got to be a goodness. ridiculous <laughs> moment. <laughs> that was a ridiculous moment. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my God! The the leeches in the water. Oh, I that almost was like grew up the watching best it. Part of what? it all. I mean, come on, man. Like I'm Filipino. That's what we eat. That's uh, what our people eat. So like, I feel like it I feel was like, like everyone this... else was like, I'm gonna throw it, but I was like uh, embracing that. And moment. then you started eating her food to help <laughs> her after. Yeah, she <laughs> she she had a hard time putting that stuff down. Well, like it was, it was gross, but man, again, it's a competition. It's mental. I'm not gonna let the army or the coast guard or whatever <laughs> beat me for any competition when that's my thing. Like I love to eat. And I'll eat weird things. <laughs> what was the texture of the? Leeches. I don't know. Like it was like I just you had to. I just had to gulp it down. Uh, never, and it was funny because uh, you know how Fear Factor works is they do the reveal and then you got to sign like the 
you know, the, the, the claws, like where if you don't chew all the leeches, there's a chance that they could latch on your esophagus and give you an ulcer. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, whatever. Like $50,000 oh, on the line. I'm just going to freaking but you gulp gulped it. it. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Did you ever worry about the, like the leeches? Yeah, it was not a map moment. Yeah. It was a competition. It's all about winning. Oh yeah. I True feel like the stunts, right the stunts wouldn't have been that bad, but eating, I could just, I, I could not do that. It was great. It was, I mean, I think the scariest part of that event or that, that, um, um, competition was the snakes like they were guarding oh, the tools yeah. yeah I don't do well with like like crawlers I snakes spider got on me <laughs> yeah, yeah I don't do well with that like yeah. we get like mice at our house like I freak out I mean the, the missus <laughs> handle that yeah. that's wild yeah that was that same one because you had to grab the tools, the tools to get them out yeah, yeah. 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 Were, were there any uh, so was it just the snakes and the leeches and was that it or did no, you have to the do first any more the, crazy the, the first event was they slingshot us off a flight deck onto a net cargo net suspended by a helicopter and you got to release flags and then the, in. then you dropped in the water yeah. and the last team to fall into the water touch the water um was a loser so it was funny because like i was sitting there and i got all my flags and then I was waiting for my partner. You know, I just wanted to be the, you know, the ultimate teammate. So she jumped and then I jumped. And then that half second, whatever it was, caused us to lose first place. So I was trying to be a good teammate, you know, wait for her and then we do it together. But it cost us first place. And what was so critical about being in first place for this event was the first place winners for that event got to select who, who, left. who left. Yeah. And instead of choosing oh. their biggest threat, which is whoever's in second, they chose last who, the last place. Yeah. So that was very honorable of them, but mm-hmm. like, it came back to haunt them. Yeah. Uh, and then you guys got in the second competition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We, well, yeah. And then the eating competition, they had to leave. And the last competition was we were suspended on a helicopter. This was so wild. They took us all around the, you know, like all of, around Oakland, around the aircraft carrier. They dropped us on the deck of the aircraft carrier. We had to sprint onto a moving truck that had grenades on top. And we had to unspin grenades that were like spun into the top of the truck before the truck went over the side. So the whole time the helicopter's flying over us, hovering over us, following us, and we're attached to it. And then, I mean, it was more, you know, the cinematography of it all, it, it seemed really dramatic. But it wasn't really that scary because you knew that you're lashed on the yeah, helicopter the yeah. whole time. Uh, so it f- became like a speed and execution thing. How fast was the car going? Fast? Uh, probably about thirty miles per hour. But you're oh. you're dealing with like limited run space, so yeah. it's you're not that. To hurry, yeah, man. it's not well, that fast. The car would just flop over overboard. Oh yeah, it just went over the side. It was pretty cool. How do they get that out? Oh, I don't know, man. That's a waste of money right there. That's not for me to worry about. So was yeah. it all shot in one day or no? No, it was three different days. So each three event was days. one day. Wow. Your stomach going back to leeches, did your stomach hurt after that though? No, so we all went to the back to the hotel, we all kind of talked about it. We all went in the sauna, kind of just like let that <laughs> achiness, like sweat, get get off our bodies. But it oh, was uh, can, it was just a, a normal day. I can't believe you did that. Oh, that's wow. insane. Well, yeah, that's definitely ridiculous, but we got to keep the show moving. We're gonna go on to but, end before, before we go. We we're uh, we were in Dallas for I don't know, oh, for my mom's makeup shoot. And I got so paranoid because there's a fly in my drink. Ugh. Yeah, and I was so paranoid. I was tripping, but you're out here eating leeches. So no, I might as well every just eat time the fly. Now, any, anywhere we go to eat now, he's always like lifting up his glass, making sure that there's no flies in it. It's like scarred him ever since that day. <laughs> to clarify, this, this wasn't at the makeup shoot, by the way. This is at a restaurant we were at. Just was had it, to was it like a, a nice restaurant? Yeah. yeah it was like a nice Mexican just, Yeah, it was just a nice Mexican. <laughs> but I was sitting here and I was drinking my Coke and I was like, I thought that was like a piece of like pepper or salt or something. I looked and it was just a dead fly. That's why you're so skinny. If you would have drank it, that's more protein. Yeah. He never just, ate the... I'll just feed it the chance. <laughs> <laughs> feed it to our dog. You never ate like the... You remember like the lollipops that had like the stink bugs in the middle? Do you ever seen those before? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember those? Yeah. Me and my cousin would, used to eat those when we were little. But mm. Yeah, they're psycho. No, well, no, he, never, he never told me they were real. He, he told me they were gummies. You remember Alec? Alec told oh, us yeah, they were yeah, gummies. Yeah. yeah. So I got tricked into eating. So what happens time. when you get to the center? You, you just chew it eat up, it, or? yeah. Oh, it was, yeah, you. it was gross. I mean, I didn't eat; I just spit it out. But <laughs> no, I, I remember those. Yeah, no, no bugs for me. No snakes. <laughs> no spiders. No nothing. Yeah, I can't do any of that. But all right, now <laughs> moving on to N. N is like two parts. So now and next. Now I know you're not the CEO of a ship anymore. So any burn moments you're going through right now? <laughs> So now, 
Uh, I'm working at Cheyenne Mountain inside the mountain, which is awesome. And one of the things that I reflect on is, you know, having to get into the mountain, you got to show your ID, you know, to get through the gate. Um, you got to validate your, you have another badge and you got to put it through the sensor and lets you through a door that you got to do your biometrics. So there you got, and then you can take a bus into the mountain. So oh like gosh. four different steps to get into the mountain. And I tell the folks that I work with, cause it becomes mundane. Like you work, you just stand and watch and people are just like, yeah, I'm here stand another eight hour watch. Hey, so think about this. Like you have to go through all these steps to get into the mountain, to stand your watch. You know how many people would die for that opportunity to see what you do in the mountain? Yeah. So how about you fix your face and see how lucky and blessed you are to have this opportunity to do something that no one else does? Or can see. Like how yeah. exciting is that? And you're able to stand a watch that's protecting the entire world, not just our nation, but what they do is pretty dang important. And wow. if they don't realize the value that they have to the entire world for them, a five person watch, stand the watch 24 seven to give warning to people all over the world, then shame on them for not understanding their importance to what they do. Um, so burn moment was, you know, folks just kind of not being happy of standing this watch. They stand an eight hour watch and then they go home and they stand it for six days and they're off for four. What a freaking life, especially yeah. Knowing what you add to the table, what you bring to the table to protect the world. So when you understand the why, understand why you're standing that watch and what good you're doing, not to just the nation, but the entire world, I guarantee you're a better watch stander. So, so having to be able to explain that to them um, was uh, you know, something that they needed because it becomes very mundane, right? Like um, the, the same thing over and over and over again. And, you know, when, you know, you have two nations that are just in conflict, there's a lot of things that happen and they're always doing something. Yeah. Um, so it was pretty wild, um, you know, to be able to see that firsthand on, on the floor, seeing all the stuff that's happening, all the things that they're reporting on. Um, but, you know, for them to lose sight and it became so commonplace and, and so routine that they forget um, you know, that there is strategic importance to the job that they're doing. So what does like a person on watch do? Like they are watching and they are reporting. <laughs> That's exactly but what like, the name is. Do they there's a they just watch over like the full like base or is there like certain things? Man, we got some things all over this world. <laughs> uh, <laughs> stuff yeah. that, stuff there's a reason that know. We, there's a reason they're there, so you can't go see them. Mm, which is so cool about what these guys do what they see and what they report on Almost and who so they're reporting to they're reporting directly to you know national leaders like at the pentagon to um you know the theater commanders you know all over the world when they see something um see something that they you know that that probably shouldn't be taking place they call directly to those folks and say stand by wow yeah so what's, wild. what's your role right now then? So I am the director of the watch floor. So okay. I'm the director of the Missile Warning Center, and I have... Miss, you know, m missile Warning? Missile Warning Center, yeah. Ooh. And it is, you know, <laughs> oh so it's about gosh. 53 folks that I'm responsible for. And um, it's uh, it's pretty wild. Yeah, oh. it's, uh, <laughs> it's pretty interesting. It's something like... So again, I'm in, you know, a seagoing mariner. I love being out at sea. I love being on ships. I mean, you put me in a mountain, but I'm inside of a cave, right? I'm inside this mountain. I feel like I'm in a submarine, but I'm still doing combat-related things. I'm still leading. I'm still motivating. I'm still influencing. So I really feel blessed that I have this opportunity to work with such great Americans. And it's not just sailors. I'm working with Space Force, the Guardians, with Air Force, um, Marines, Army. So it's a joint job. And um, it's really, really awesome to be able to work with not just young sailors, but I'm talking young airmen, young uh, guard, uh, guardians, you know, young, uh, young Marines. It's awesome when we all work together for the common goal. So it's much, much higher stakes than just uh, the Navy, right? Mm -hmm. Just a bunch of sailors doing what they know how to do. Um, when you're dealing with the joint world and all these young now different types of people, um, it, 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 it's pretty fulfilling. Mm -hmm. On a scale from one to 10, how stressful is your job? 
Mm. <laughs> so the the job itself, when I'm just leading, not standing in the watch, it's not very stressful. Again, it's leading. Mm. But when you think about the stress level of the watch standards and what they're responsible for, it's pretty high up there. Mm-hmm. What one thing that you know probably decreases the level of stress is they're not in harm. They're not, they're not harmed, right? They pr- pr- provide the early warning to the folks that could be harmed. Um, but you know, there's always the reason why it's in Cheyenne Mountain is because if they suffer some sort of you know some sort of blast nuclear blast they have these big old blast doors um that will protect the watch floor uh, from having to go down so you'll always be able to sustain 24-hour watch wow. regardless wow. of the impact you know whatever flavor of missile or bomb uh, hits colorado that's so cool how it's just in a mountain and won't, can't be touched oh it's cool they've it, done it, it all it on has. ships on wa- ships on water now in a mountain <laughs> everything i'm a i'm a, I'm a mountain man now yeah i mean it's self-sustaining like they have their own engines inside they have their own reservoirs in the mountain itself it's it's, it's like a city in there cool. almost yeah. oh That's yeah so I get my, cool. I, yeah they got a gym they got a subway so in case they do close the blast doors and you got to be able to survive um you could do it for several days maybe several months wow and then after all that stuff what you then just, you open the door and you see what's left just Isn't that just a, like a scary thought? Yeah. yeah. Right? Like, it's at any moment. That's so... Yeah, oh. like the, it's kind of the things that they make movies out of, right? Like they bring everyone, like all civilians, they run up to the mountain, they go inside the blast doors, and then they withstand the blast. And then once conflict is done, years later, you know, they open up the doors and you walk out and you see what's left. Nothing. Just nothing but a just nice crater. <laughs> just in the middle yeah. of Colorado. Let's not, let's not experience that. Yeah. No, hopefully yeah, not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I do got to ask, have, has there been like, not any close calls cause like with nuclear stuff, but like any intruders like ever come like, what, since you've been there? Into the base? Yeah. It's way like too any, hard. Like any close calls? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's way, way too, hard. too hard. Yeah. What about on the ship? Cool. Uh, we drill to that, so it, it's pretty tough, and and that's kind of my thing too, right? Like, you in order to get to the ship, you have to go through the gate guard, you got to go through the turnstile, and then there's an armed guard on the ship, and then not only do you get through the brow, but you have to salute and request permission to come aboard. You are actively choosing to come onto the ship, so why would you come to the ship with a bad attitude when you're saying, "Hey, can I come on board? Can I come aboard to do my job?" People, like, they don't understand that. Like, if you don't want to come to work and do your job, then don't even come salute and request permission. Just stay out on the pier and then take your punishment. Now, when you were requesting permission, which I'm sure when you guys came on board, you guys loved, right? Yeah, it like, was awesome. Why don't Best people have seen. that same attitude? Like, they get to do something so epic that not a lot of people get to do. Why don't you make the most of it? And the folks that aren't um, real happy, probably are the junior sailors, well, guess what? You're not going to be junior long if you keep doing your job. Mm-hmm. If you do your job to the best of your ability, you're going to get promoted. You're going to get more money. You're going to get more responsibility. You're going to get cooler things on your shoulders, right? So why not just suck it up, roll up your sleeves, and get dirty and freaking work your butt off so that you can become now in a position of authority you know, to start leading and then changing the game however you see fit? People get so caught up in where they're at now, where they're planning at now, and they think, man, my life sucks because all I do is paint the ship. You think you're going to be paying the ship for the 20, for 20 years of your, of your career? No, you're going to do it for like six months, and then you're going to become a petty officer, or maybe two years. You're going to become a petty officer, and then you get to lead and, and tell other people to paint the yeah. size of the ship, <laughs> right? And then it just goes higher and higher and higher. I just wish people would stop getting so focused on where they are right then and there and they don't see the bigger picture. That if I just beast out and do the best job that I possibly can, they're going to see it. Someone's going to notice. Hopefully someone's going to recognize me and say, hey, you are my number one of whatever. You need to get promoted right away. And then that person gets promoted right away. And then they're on this track where it is just like this, like this, this, this train that is you can't stop it because they got a little taste of the success. Mm-hmm. And what? All I had to do was work? All I had to do is just say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, and just do my job? And then I get rewarded by getting more money, by getting you know higher rank? The, it, it's not a secret, right? Mm-hmm. It, it's not hard. 
Just do your job. Enjoy your job. Do it with a smile. Show up to work on time. Look good in uniform. Say yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Write things down. The Navy's not hard. It's just when people have bad attitudes and they think, oh, man, they're out to get me. Uh, you know, I'm, you know, you know, whatever. Um, you know, I'm treated differently because of whatever reason. That's when they start to falter because they lose sight and they all they have excuses. They have things that they, you know, the that they're going to blame instead of looking inward, looking in the mirror and saying, I could do a better job. Yeah. Excel I feel, like, harder. I feel like people are focused on the prize, not the process. Absolutely. I say the fruit, not the root. Mm. That's a good one. Right? Yeah. So it, if you focus on the root, you know, you're going to have fruit that'll bear and, 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 and that tree will flourish. Right. But if you're just worried about the fruit, you may have one big blossom and you may have this tasty mango or whatever, mm -hmm. but then, it's not going to be sustainable because you're not focusing on the foundation, on the roots. Mm -hmm. They lose the process. Yeah. Enjoy mm -hmm. the process. That's what my dad and my parents always say. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the process. process. Enjoy it. Yeah, and it'll get you to the prize. Yep. Mm -hmm. so, I feel like you just to always got to keep your, keep your head down, just keep working. Just grind. Don't yeah. Let the chips fall where they fall. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, God's going to put you exactly where you need to be at all times. And Absolutely. If it's pain the side of the ship. It's pain the side of the yeah. ship. <laughs> if, yeah, if they ask you to paint, be the best dang painter there is. Yeah. You know, you're going to get rewarded, I promise. Mm. And oh, you know what the biggest reward is? Somebody walking down the ship and saying, holy smokes, this ship looked good. And Especially then you an just, outsider. Yeah. Like for us, like mm -hmm. we like went in the ship and we we're like, oh my God, this thing is so beautiful, so clean. And like that's their reward. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Being the most sexiest ship, like yeah. you said, on the water. Take pride in your work. You know, and if you take pride in your work and you can see people's lives affected because of your work that's why it's leadership's responsibility to make sure that they recognize and appreciate folks culture sure. culture Absolutely. all comes culture. down to culture yeah has someone ever like going back to like the bad people on the ship has someone ever not saluted you like whenever yeah so funny story um so not on the ship but like on on the base um you know our ranks i have a bird you know for being a captain but it kind of looks like a 04 bird right or oh five bird so we were walking down and there's a bunch of ensigns um oh ones walking by and they're the uh, lowest by the way right of officers yeah, yeah. of officers yeah. so we walked by each other right and then they didn't salute me and i was like yeah whatever they're just a bunch of ensigns they don't know any better but sh sure enough i hear a hey shipmate and that sometimes that's not a you know very good term to use it means like you're in trouble so i turned around and they shipmated me and they were just, uh, I turned around, I looked at them, and they were just like, hey, uh, how about a salute, shipmate? Oh. And then I was they just said like, that to you? They said that to me. Oh. And, then I, and then I looked, uh -oh. I looked down at my rank, and I said, uh, how about you first? <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, it's just like, the, I let them go, but they had the nerve to stop me, who they thought obviously was like an E4 enlisted, to say, hey, how about a salute, shipmate, when they're the ones that were in the wrong. Uh -huh. Right, and I let it go, but then as soon as they called me out, I'm like, uh, "How about <laughs> I bet you they first? Turn, I bet they turned stone cold." Oh, yeah, 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 he was probably like, "Oh no!" <laughs> even, I, even on the uh, whenever we came on board for my mom's scene, so, like someone like they forgot to slew you, but they instantly came back up and they like slew you and they said sorry, yeah. and you're like, "Oh, I'll get yeah. it. like, <laughs> don't worry about it." <laughs> Again, like I'm not a leader that leads for salutes. I just lead for respect. Yeah, and that's all it is. And it's mm -hmm. about you know making sure that the team gets every opportunity uh, to be successful. And that's kind of my job as a leader, right? I'm not there, you know, for the glory. I'm not there for the salutes. I'm there to give every sailor an opportunity to achieve whatever it is they want out of life. Because if, I, if I'm able to do that 5, 10, 50, 20 years down the road and they say, hey, Captain, you know, I am this now because of you, because you gave me that opportunity. That made my whole life. That made my whole career. And I'm a yeah. happy dude. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just love me. I live by the model. I just love seeing people smile. Oh, that's yeah. the biggest thing. If I see someone smiling, it's enjoying me. So if you walk down the waterfront and you go to a ship, you won't see a bunch of smiles. You walk on board the John P. Murtha, especially when I was there. All smiles. It was all, all smiles. smiles. I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys remember how they um, they um, they give me the honors. You know, they ring the bells and they oh, yeah. they, they announce you that you're they're coming on board. aboard. Oh, so yeah. most ships they do just like. Ding, 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 John P. Murtha arriving. That's it, right? They did that to me on the first day, and I was like, hey, I want to be excited when I come on board the ship, and I want to hear the excitement and the energy, because we're setting the tone when you guys announced me to come on board the ship. 
So then next thing you know, it became the Michael Buffer. It became like <laughs> yeah. who could be the most, you know, the most ridiculous. Please welcome oh, yeah. Captain <laughs> John. Like, John. Oh, yeah, yeah. Martha. That's and how he said it. became wild. Yeah. And I loved it. Like that was the culture that we established. Them to take pride in their captain coming on board the ship. And then now all the other ships were like, man, I want to be on that ship. They heard it on the one MC. They heard it throughout the waterfront. They're like, what are you guys doing, man? I want some of that. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, when they have fun and they're smiling and they're given the permission to have fun, to do the, the crazy things that we do, um, that's when, you, that's when they, they're at their best. Mm-hmm. It's the little things. So true. Just that set Absolutely. the entire so tone for the day, for the week, for the trip if you guys were going out. But first and foremost, you got to win. You can't enjoy all the things, the epic things that we do for fun if we're a losing organization. Yeah. If you win then you have yeah. the opportunities mm-hmm. to enjoy life. Yep. So true. It's awesome. Well, you're definitely an inspiration to me and Priest and oh, thousands, of, thousands of people out there. So thank you so much, Jerv. You just spelt burn in your life. Oh, they I do have it. to check out your Instagram because that's sick. So tell yeah. them yeah. where so your Instagram is. Out. So it is Captain Jervy. My handle is at Captain Jervy. C-A-P-T-A-I-N. That's most Captain. And Jervy. G-E-R-V-Y. I'm telling you, you guys Best have to go Instagram check it out. Instagram on the planet. Best Instagram. The videos <laughs> I was are it yesterday, sick. Actually, some TikToks of the family you'll see in there. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> and you yeah. can you can judge who has the best moves <laughs> <laughs> for sure. And as a gift for coming on the show for us, there's a Burn Factory Black Label Edition yes. hat and hoodie that only guests can get. Yeah. Ooh. So yeah. So being a guest on our show, you get you get the Black Label Edition. I love it. Yeah. Thank so. you for the Black Label. You gotta, of course, you gotta any rep time. that. Mm-hmm. And then thank you for putting me on your logo. I appreciate it. Oh, you're, you're so welcome. <laughs> we took that. your silhouette. I take all credit. The abs. You guys, <laughs> you guys did me justice with the uh-huh. abs. I appreciate that. Cool. Thanks for <laughs> coming right. on. Hey, it was truly an honor. And if I didn't get an opportunity to thank you guys personally, um, God, Lee, you guys, young people, 16, 19 years old, doing epic things, changing lives, mm. putting stories out. That is amazing. I can't believe that I've seen and witnessed the growth and the maturity of you two. Um, keep doing your thing. Um, you guys are awesome. And I can't wait to see what's next, man. You guys are freaking awesome. Appreciate it. Right. Love you guys. Love yes. You. Bottom of the heart. Love All you guys. Right. Like always, please visit my foundation at priestjamesfoundation.org. Again, priestjamesfoundation.org to understand why this is called The Burn Factory. See you guys for the next episode. Peace. <laughs>